Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who are pleased to give us the shining example of the Holy Family, graciously grant that we may imitate them in practicing the virtues of family life and in the bonds of charity. And so in the joy of your house, delight one day in eternal rewards. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. The word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am your shield. I will make your reward very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what good will your gifts be if I keep on being childless and I have as my heir the steward of my house, Eliezer? Abram continued, See, you have given me no offspring, and so one of my servants will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him. No, that one shall not be your heir. Your own issue shall be your heir. The Lord took Abram outside and said, Look up at the sky and count the stars if you can. Just so, he added, shall your descendants be. Abram put his faith in the Lord. 
who credited it to him as an act of righteousness. The Lord took note of Sarah as he had said he would. He did for her as he had promised. Sarah became pregnant and bore Abraham, a son in his old age, at the set time that God has stated. Abraham gave the name Isaac to this son of his, whom Sarah bore him. The word of the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, invoke his name. Make known among the nations his deeds. Sing to him, sing his praise. Proclaim all his wondrous deeds. The Lord his covenant forever. Glory in his holy name. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the descendants of Abraham, his servants, sons of Jacob, his chosen ones. He, the Lord, is our God. Throughout the earth, his judgments Remembers forever his covenant, which he made, binding for a thousand generations, which he entered into with Abraham, and by his oath to Isaac. The A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, by faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. He went out, not knowing where he has to go. By faith, he received power to generate, even though he was past the normal age and Sarah herself was sterile for he thought that the one who had made the promise was trustworthy. So it was that there came forth from one man, himself as good as dead, 
descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sands on the seashore. By faith, Abraham, when put to the test, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises was ready to offer his only son, of whom it was said, through Isaac, descendants shall bear your name. He reasoned that God was able to raise even from the dead, and he received Isaac back as a symbol. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the days were completed for their purification according to the law of Moses, they took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Just as it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord, and to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons, in accordance with the dictate in the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the Spirit into the temple and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Master, you may let your servant go in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all the peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and glory for your people Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him, and Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be contradicted, and you yourself a sword will pierce, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. There was also a prophetess Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived seven years with her husband after her marriage and then as a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped night and day with fasting and prayer. And coming forward at that very time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all, <coughs> to all who were waiting the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth, the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We celebrate the Feast of the Holy Family today, really uh, kind of stirring up our witness because the society in which we live uh, very much rejects the whole idea 
of the biblical idea of the family in many aspects. When we have marriage being conducted between a man and a man, woman or woman, when we have you know, widespread acceptance of abortion, contraception, homosexuality, divorce, uh, there is um, a loss of the sense of the sacredness of the marriage unit, which is something that uh, permeates the Bible. Uh, God leads the people, like he led Abraham, uh, through the institution of the family. If you think about the Ten Commandments, the, uh, three of the Ten Commandments have to do with family life. The Fourth Commandment, honor your mother and father. The Sixth Commandment, you shall not commit, uh, commit adultery. And the, and the Ninth Commandment, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife. So there's the significance of God's, the way God structured things, obviously, um, that we're meant to respect and honor. When we, uh, when we talk about honoring your father and mother, that's the one commandment that includes a blessing connected with it. It's also a commandment that lasts throughout the whole of life. As children, we respect our parents and obey them. All through life, we're meant to care for them in their old age. Um, so uh, love grows within the family. That's really the way God designed it. It has a structure that we're meant to respect, but also the, the family is the school of love. We get to choose our friends, but the family members, our, our parents, our uh, siblings, uh, even our cousins and other relatives, those people are put into our life. And, and that they give us uh, instruction about um, they, they, they give us instruction uh, about loving people we may not necessarily be attracted to. Like we said, we get to choose our friends, our family members and relatives we do not. That's why the family is the school of love. Um, the gospel reading tells us you know, really about the holy family. Mary, Joseph, and Jesus. This is a unique family, obviously, because of the role that our Lord played, but it's significant that he decided to come into the world as part of a family. It was obviously a choice of God, divine providence. It did not have to happen that way. But uh, the Holy Family is presented to us as an ideal, especially this feast day of the Holy Family, because the secret of their family was placing God at the center of life. That really reminds us that even though family life has its difficulties, every family has its crises, and uh, they're mentioned in this particular gospel. When Simeon is making his prophecy, he says this child will be the fall and rise of many in Israel. He's indicating the difficult life that Jesus was to lead, but all at the same time, he, he, he gave his blessing to Jesus. And the gospel reminds us, obviously, uh, of his divine power, divine role. So to put prayer at the center of our family life, to remember that God is with us to sustain us in whatever difficulties we encounter in the family, these are things we remember. As we remember the, the, the structure that God had put in place of the family and how we're meant to be faithful to it, and grow in love through, through our membership of our own human family. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We now bring our prayers before Almighty Father. That Christians practice kindness and patience every day. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the leaders of the world value families, affirming all children will grow in wisdom and truly value the lessons learned from their parents. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That families separated by war or distance be reunited in God's boundless love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That elderly parents be consoled and strengthened by caring and loving sons, daughters, and grandchildren. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That single people find welcome in our parish, family, and live out their vocation through lives of charity, prayer, and service. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our personal intentions and for all who have asked for our prayers, we pray for the repose of the souls of Luisa Arias, Catalina Sanchez, and Carmelo de Jesus, and Travis Crawford. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, Lord, hear our prayer. For Edward Kales, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask these things and all things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join in singing our offertory hymn, What Child Is This? Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We 
we offer you, Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, humbly asking that through the intercession of the Virgin Mother of God and St. Joseph, we, you may establish our families firmly in your grace and your peace, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. From the feast of this ought filled mystery, though invisible in his own divine nature, he has appeared visibly in ours, and begotten before all ages, he has begun to exist in time, so that raising up in himself all that was cast down, he might restore unity to all creation and call straying humanity back to the heavenly kingdom. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy, these gifts you have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for... This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. 
Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to the second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death, you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord to whom he bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who go to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Bring those who refresh with this heavenly sacrament, most merciful Father, to imitate constantly the example of the Holy Family, so that after the trials of this world we may share their company forever, through Christ our Lord. Please be seated, everybody, for just a, a moment. Just a few announcements. I wanted to give everybody an update on, on my sabbatical. I'm thrilled to be able to take advantage of this opportunity uh, to hopefully be a better priest for you. Um, but there had to be a few changes in the original plan. Uh, originally, I was going to go to Spain to do the spiritual exercises and walk the Camino of St. James. But I won't be able to do that because Spain isn't letting people in. So I'm going to do the spiritual exercises in, in uh, a retreat house here in the United States, actually in Florida. What can you do? Uh, and, uh, and then, so I'm going to be doing the, take a, a, a Bible course, a mini course of, of scripture study first, then the 30-day spiritual exercises. And from there, I'll head to El Salvador to take a course at the University of Central America in San Salvador and, it, um, and, and live in a parish. I'm going to stay at San Antonio's parish, just on the outskirts in Colonia America in the city of San Salvador. And um, I, I'm looking forward to this chance to rest and to pray, but I'll be carrying you with me. I'm not leaving until uh, January 4th, but I wanted to give that update. And I want to let you know also that um, Father Vincent won't be left alone by, by God's wonderful providence. We're blessed to have Bishop Byrne with us. Thank you, Bishop Byrne, for offering the Mass tonight. And um, he'll, of course, be with us, but he also has duties as the vicar, the Episcopal vicar of the Bronx. But I'm really grateful that Father Nick, or Nicolene Pergini, is also going to be helping Father Vincent during these 12 weeks of sabbatical. Um, the interesting thing, Father... Virginia was in the seminary with me. He lived across the hall from me, and we've been friends for, for 25, more than 25 years, um, more like 30 years. And he's a great priest. He's originally from Albania, and he, for many years, was the pastor of St. Lucy's here in the Bronx, where the La Gruta is. But the cardinal gave him a special mission in Albania to go back at the request of the papal nuncio there. But when that ended, he came back, but came back in early December, and there wasn't a, a, a parish open for him to go, so he's just staying temporarily. I'm so grateful that the diocese has enabled him to, to stay for this time until Holy Week, when no doubt he'll be given a different assignment, but at least he's going to be here to cover. Father um, Pergini speaks Albanian, English, Spanish, and Italian, and I'm not sure what other languages but uh, we're grateful that he'll be with us. And I know that Holy Cross parishioners will give him Holy Cross welcome when he comes. Uh, Father Vincent did leave earlier today, and he'll be back in time to finish up the quarantine according to the New York State guidelines to, to get back into the swing of things like he always does. But we wish him well on his uh, time off as he will be coming back on, um, on the night of January 3rd, just before I leave. In the meantime... Hope everybody had a great Christmas. I want to remind everybody that New Year's Day is also a holy day of obligation. The Catholics are obliged to attend Mass. Here's our Mass schedule. On the Christmas, I'm sorry, on New Year's Eve, we'll have the 5 p.m. Mass in English, 7.15 p.m. Mass in Spanish. And then on Friday, January 1st, New Year's Day 2021, finally in 2021, uh, the mass schedule is a little different. Here's uh, because it's a, it's an unusual day. It's a religious day and it's a it's a civil holiday. So we're going to have 8 a.m. mass in English, 12 noon mass bilingual, and then 17 sorry 7:15 p.m. mass uh, in Spanish that night is your last chance mass to complete the obligation for New Year's Day. And what a great thing to do to welcome in the new year by offering holy mass. So. I wanted to share these announcements with you, everybody. I invite you to please stand for a final blessing and our St. Michael prayer. The 
Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, the Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who roam about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Please join in singing our final hymn, Hark the Herald Angels Sing.